coming up on today's show. Sony surprises everyone at CES with an amazing electric car. Volkswagen says it needs to dramatically change to avoid the same fate as Nokia. And Elon Musk says that your Tesla may soon start talking to you. These stories and more coming next. It's good to be back in the studio, and I hope you've been enjoying all of our CES 2020 content. We're about a third of the way through it right now. Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. You can find out how you can accelerate the electrification of transportation today at electricauto.org. Today's show is also sponsored by the fourth annual Carbon Exchange Raffle. There is still time to get your ticket for the chance to win a Tesla of your dreams. So stick around until the end of the show and I'll make sure you know how to enter, as well as how you can get 15% off your tickets to Fully Charged Live USA next week. Well, in two weeks time, February 1st and 2nd in Austin, Texas. We're just back from CES 2020, where we saw plenty of cool things, and we've got plenty of things to share with you on this channel. But perhaps the most impressive exhibit this year was an unexpected one, a fully functioning all-electric car from Sony. With what we were told was a better range than anything on the market today, this car has all-wheel drive, impressive specs, and a complement of 33 onboard digital sensors, made by Sony, of course. Sadly, though, this car is unlikely to be available for the public to buy. This is essentially, for now, a technology demonstrator Sony is using to showcase all of its vehicle tech. We were one of the lucky few to get inside while we are at CES, and there is a review coming. California luxury EV company Lucid has announced this week that it will be revealing its official production version of the Lucid Air Electric sedan in April in New York City. That would likely place the reveal to take place during the New York Auto Show, although Lucid hasn't confirmed that publicly. The Lucid Air prototype, that's what you're seeing here on screen, was certainly pretty futuristic in its interior design language, so expect a more toned down version for the production vehicle. It will enter an increasingly crowded luxury EV market segment, so I'm really keen to see where it sets itself apart from the competition. In order to avoid the same fate that Nokia had in the world of the iPhone, Volkswagen needs to dramatically change the way it operates in the world of Tesla. And that's the message from Volkswagen boss Herbert Diaz, who told Reuters this week that the age of the classic car maker is over and that changes that Volkswagen needs to execute to survive will be its toughest challenges to date. He confirmed major cuts in traditional automotive investment and said that connected and self-driving cars, as well as electric mobility, were what Volkswagen needs to focus on from now on. From outside, it certainly seems as if Volkswagen realizes it needs to change or die. Tesla sent an update letter to its reservation holders for the semi at the start of this year, giving those patiently waiting for their all-electric big rig a written briefing on Tesla semi engineering process, confirming that limited volume Tesla semi production is unlikely to start until the second half of this year. Tesla reported to reservation holders that the Tesla semi testing program is progressing well, with test trucks holding up well to stringent tests. It looks like higher volume production won't start until 2021, however, with Tesla saying production specs will come, quote, next year. At the tail end of last year, official range estimates for the 2020 Porsche Taycan Turbo of just 201 miles per charge from a 93.4 kilowatt hour battery pack were released. Now we've just heard the official rating for the highest performance Taycan, the Taycan Turbo S, and it's even worse. At 192 miles per charge, the Taycan Turbo S is now the least efficient EV on sale to date, managing just 68 miles per gallon equivalent. But if this car gets more Porsche drivers plugging in, even with terrible efficiency, that's better than keeping them with internal combustion engine cars, right? U.S. President Donald Trump may have campaigned on the promise of increasing the mining and burning of what he called, quote, beautiful clean coal, but official figures just released show that 2019 saw the second fastest closedown of coal-fired power plants in the U.S. on record. 
According to data collected from the U.S. federal government, around 15,000 megawatts of coal-fired power stations were either retired or converted to other power generation methods. The reason? Coal just isn't financially sustainable when compared to other forms of generation. And renewable generation methods have never been more affordable. And that means that electric cars are just getting cleaner and cleaner as the grid does the same. The Boring Company is apparently full steam ahead with its first public project, a twin tunnel loop system between different parts of the Las Vegas Convention Center. The tunnel is going to be around one mile in length, and it's actually shorter than the Boring Company's original Los Angeles demonstration tunnel. Unlike the original Boring Company goals of dropping travel times in busy cities, this particular tunnel is designed just to cut travel times between different parts of the Las Vegas Convention Center, which, as I can vouch for, has having been there for a week, is huge. Without a union representing them, Tesla employees have traditionally found it harder to negotiate for pay rises. And with Tesla just ending its best quarter and best year to date, some Tesla staff are taking an interesting route to asking for more pay. A petition on coworker.org, initiated by a Tesla employee in Richmond, Virginia, and supported by other Tesla workers around the US, calls for Tesla to increase wages by 15% to, quote, bring us closer to a living wage. In just four days, it's amassed 453 signatures, many of whom are from Tesla employees and Tesla customers. Last week, ahead of CES 2020, Fisker unveiled its Ocean Electric SUV, and at CES, we got to see the all-electric crossover for the first time. We even made a video on it. You can see it here. Made with recycled plastic recovered from discarded fishing nets in the ocean, the Fisker Ocean is not a bad-looking car, and it can be reserved from $250 from either a full purchase from $37,499 in the US or $379 per month from a lease program. Sadly, though, we've not been given full specs yet. We've been promised them around the Geneva Motor Show in a few months' time. And now it's time for Short Shorts. Chevrolet Bolt EVs are going for a song across the US as Chevy prepares for the end of its tax credits for Chevy EVs in April. In some places, you can get more than $10,000 in lease incentives off of a Bolt, and there are some pretty good purchase deals too. Tesla's vehicle safety report for the last quarter shows that there's been an increase in the number of autopilot-related crashes up from one every 4.34 million miles driven in the previous quarter to one every 3.07 million miles driven in the last quarter. But these crash rates are still far lower than those for non-autopilot equipped vehicles. At an event to mark the start of the Chinese-made Model 3, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said Tesla would be building a design studio and research and development center in China in the near future and would use it to design a new vehicle for the global market. This picture is all we have of that vehicle right now. Mercedes-Benz has officially launched the EQC electric SUV in India with deliveries due to start in April this year. This places India ahead of the US in the queue to start deliveries of EQC, a fact that has upset some US customers. James Murdoch, son of media empire magnate R Rupert Murdoch, is now publicly attacking his father's companies, including Fox News, Sky Corp and Sky, for their inaccurate coverage of the current climate crisis and global warming. James is also currently an independent director at Tesla. A new feature allowing you to purchase upgrades for your Tesla from within the smartphone app is causing some problems, with some customers accidentally purchasing expensive upgrades for their cars without realizing it until they get a big bill in the process. Nissan has added its 360 safety system as standard on all three trim levels for the 2020 LEAF, as well as standardizing the infotainment system across all trim levels. The LEAF SL gets nixed with a 40 kWh battery pack, while the LEAF Plus retains the S, SV and SL trims. Most models have gone up in price by about $1,600. US Do you remember the cracked bulletproof glass from the Tesla Cybertruck reveal event? Well, Tesla has turned it into a marketing opportunity and you can now buy your very own Cybertruck bulletproof glass t-shirt with the now famous crack. I'd quite like one. What about you? 
FCV are maybe losing ground around the world, but Honda and Isuzu have just announced a two-year partnership, which will see Isuzu test the fuel cell stack from Honda's passenger vehicles in its small commercial trucks. It may lead to a commercial production partnership. Amidst rumours of financial woes, James Bond's favourite brand, Aston Martin, is cancelling production plans for its electric Aston Martin Rapide E. Officially, it hasn't said what will happen next, but sources at the company says that the Rapide E will eventually be deemed a research and development project. So-called soft charges, such as permitting and regulatory red tape, is what is actually holding up deployment of EV charging infrastructure. That's according to a new report from the Rocky Mountain Institute, which said this week that the hidden costs are killing EV infrastructure rollout, not the actual cost of the charging hardware. Free Now, the new joint car sharing platform owned by BMW and Daimler, has just ordered 60 Teslas to expand its electric vehicle car fleet. While both automakers do have electric cars of their own, the Tesla additions expand choice and EV ease of use for customers. Hyundai Kia have announced a $110 million investment in a UK electric van startup called Arrival. The company produces boxy delivery vehicles on a skateboard platform and they have a claimed range of around 300 miles per charge. New reports suggest that Hummer is coming back as an electric vehicle brand, with an all-electric low-volume 4x4 pickup due to go on sale as an electric Hummer in 2022 under the GMC nameplate. And the brand spokesperson for this new cleaner Hummer? Well, it's LeBron James. Toyota's second-generation Mirai has been revealed and will go on sale in Japan, Europe and North America later this year. Using a three rather than two fuel tank system, range has been improved and the car is now less nerdy in its design with a much more upmarket high-end feel. A new pilot program in Nottingham, UK will use wireless charging infrastructure to charge electric taxi cabs while they wait for fares outside of Nottingham's railway station. It's part of a pilot project with the Department for Transport in the UK to see how to improve charging infrastructure for electric taxi cabs. Reports are trickling in from Honda Clarity fuel cell leaseholders suggesting that their cars are suffering massive range degradation due to the physical degradation of the fuel cell stacks in their cars, as well as filling stations not properly compressing hydrogen in their car's tanks. Range drops are as large as 30% from when the vehicles were new. The Ecomotive team at TU Eindhoven has yet again presented a new concept car. This time, the vehicle, called Luca, is an electric vehicle built using flax and recycled PET plastic. Power comes from a pair of 15 kilowatt in-wheel motors and a six-module battery pack. A UK government report is creating alarm by suggesting that demand for power for electric cars could cause blackouts and power cuts unless action is taken now. What the report seems to avoid, however, is the fact that most people charge their cars overnight when electrical grid demand is at its lowest. Volvo has confirmed that it will build a new US battery plant in order to produce battery packs for its upcoming all-electric XC90 SUV. The vehicle, due to enter into production for 2022, will have a new battery plant built alongside Volvo's existing South Carolina production facility. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has confirmed that it's investigating Tesla after 127 claims of unintended acceleration in its electric vehicles. Of these, there are 110 crashes and 52 injuries included. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Here's one for you. What do Apple and Fiat, Chrysler, Peugeot, Citroën have in common? Well, aside from the use of CarPlay and FCA vehicles, it turns out that they will soon share a manufacturing partner. That's because Hon Hai Precision Industry Company a main assembler for Apple iPhones and other Apple computers is in the process of establishing a joint venture with FCA to develop and make electric vehicles for the Chinese market. The venture will be 50-50 owned between the two companies, and while it will focus on electric vehicles for China, it could eventually end up expanding to more global markets. And finally, the idea that cars can talk to us is not a new thing. From the fantasy of Kit in the 1980s, 
to the actual real terror that was the MG Maestro and that notorious voice synthesizer telling you you've got a door ajar, we've not been swayed on the idea of conversing with our cars. And this week, Tesla took a step towards that future vision, with Elon Musk posting a video on Twitter showcasing a Tesla vehicle actually factually talking as it drove down the road. Musk says it will be a real thing and we will eventually see talking Teslas, but it's got me wondering what a talking Tesla would actually say or even sound like. Thoughts in the comments below, please. That's about it for the news portion of this show. But before I go, I bet you'd like to know how you can get a Tesla for just 250 US dollars. Interested? Well, let me tell you about the fourth annual carbon raffle from Climate Exchange, one of today's show sponsors. They are a great nonprofit working with states across the US to implement smart policies that impact our planet for the better. And this year, the carbon raffle has been extended all the way out to Valentine's Day, February 14th, which is, you know, in a couple of weeks time. So you better get moving. You can enter today at carbonraffle.org for a chance to win a Tesla of your choice, taxes included, of up to $195,000 value, and there's going to be runners-up prizes of ten dollars and $5,000 each. Tickets are limited, really limited, so grab yours before they all go. You'll find full terms and conditions on the site, but I should note here that it's only open to US residents. Sorry, go on, buy a ticket there. I also want to tell you about Fully Charged Live and their first ever US show, next month on February 1st and 2nd in Austin, Texas. Our whole crew will be there, as well as plenty of other EV YouTubers, including the guys from Now You Know, Rich Rebuilds, Answers the Joe, Everyday Astronaut, and plenty more. We are now about two and a bit weeks out, but there is still time to get 15% off your ticket by heading to the link above or in the show notes below and putting TE2019 in the discount window. Finally, I'd like to say thanks to the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's news roundup. They've been advocating and educating the world about electric vehicles since 1967. And the Electric Auto Association believes very firmly that the future depends on us going electric today. You can find out how to become an EV educator for yourself, discover a local monthly meetup, or just you know talk to other real world EV owners about what it's like to drive an electric car by going to electricauto.org. As usual, if you'd like to help us make more videos like this and all of the ones we've been producing from CES, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon. Visit our swag store. And if you'd like to, send us a coffee with Kofi, you know, for our road trip drinks. Anything you can send our way is appreciated. We've just wrapped up our CES trip and we're about to turn around and head to Fully Charged Live. And let me tell you, our funds are really quite low right now, so anything you can do would be appreciated. I'll be back next week with another regular roundup before we head to Texas. So until then, thanks for joining me. And don't forget to be better, kinder and smarter with one another. Keep evolving.